we find ourselves on the hallways of a typical dorm room on a Saturday night. As we work these hallways, students are having parties, drinking and having fun. The atmosphere is pretty vibrant and alive. We come to a stop at a particular room. Inside is a student who is not joining the festivities. His name's Daniel. He is a 20-year-old student who lives far away from the hometown he grew up in. Going to college wasn't exactly his dream, more like his father's, but he was a young adult who still couldn't say no to his parents. On the day he got accepted to college, he was both happy and sad at the same time. Obviously, he didn't show anyone his true feelings. He brushed them off as just being scared of moving out into the world. He hoped that these feelings would dissipate over time, but they never did. His father was very proud that his son would get a degree and maybe carry on the family business. While sitting alone in his dorm room, he gets a message on his phone. Puzzled by who it might be, since he wasn't all that popular, he checks his phone with excitement. Unknown number. The text read, Hey there, it's getting late. You should be getting ready. Thinking that it was just a wrong number, he ignores it and doesn't respond, since he didn't have any plans for the night. After about five minutes, he gets another message. This one said, Come on, I see you're not getting ready. I told you, it's getting late. This one sent a little shiver down Danny's spine. Is someone watching me? He thought to himself. He proceeds to reply to the sender. I'm sorry, you must have the wrong number. I don't know you and I don't have plans for this evening. Almost instantly, the reply showed up on his screen. I do have the right number. Daniel. His heart started beating faster, his breath a little shallower. This time, Daniel didn't even bother to reply. He just added the number to the block list and went on with his evening. That was quite a scare, he told himself, as his heart was still beating a little bit faster. After about 10 minutes or so, his phone, all of his emails, even the old landline in the room began to ring and beep. Everything said, you can't block me, Danny. He even received a voicemail. When he listened to it, this was the moment he really started panicking. The voice on the other end said the exact same thing. You can't block me. All sorts of questions began running through Daniel's head. Who is this guy? How does he know me? All of my contact information. His hands literally shaking. He types, who are you? How do you know me? The reply came as fast as lightning. I don't, but I will. Soon, gasping for breath, his hands shaking and his heart rushing, Daniel crouched into a corner and began scanning the room like paranoid. Who is this guy? How can he see or contact me? He starts typing on his phone. Who are you? What do you want from me? Nothing. An eerie silence falls upon the room. A dark figure can be seen materializing in the far corner of his room. It's an odd silhouette, covered in a cloak that seems to be approaching him ever so slowly. The dark figure could be heard saying something. I don't want anything from you. It's you who want something from me. In a blind panic, Daniel dropped his phone on the ground. Trying to get to it, he couldn't quite reach or lift it. Daniel struggled to pick up the phone in his arms, but didn't quite have the power to do so. The dark voice in his room said, I told you, we would meet soon. His body went into shock. He started shivering uncontrollably. His heart started pounding like crazy, and his breath was even shallower. The dark figure, dressed in a black cloak, appeared from the shadows and began leaning in. 
Daniel desperately reached for the phone, but it was like it was glued to the floor. The dark figure began to speak again. You see, Danny, this is what happens when you cut too deep. You cut the tendons as well. Even if you wanted to call for help now, it's too late. You're almost ready. We'll be going soon. As he faded in and out of consciousness, he remembered all the bickering and fighting with his father, always telling him what a disappointment he is, that he is weak and pathetic, that he would never be half the man he is, a successful businessman with a million dollar empire. Maybe this school will teach you how to be a man, he said right before he shipped him off. With his final breath, the dark cloaked figure began dragging Daniel into the shadows. On his desk was his report card. He had failed almost all his classes. He couldn't face his father, not like this. He couldn't bear to hear one more critic from his mouth. As the blood pulled around his wrists, the music around the dorm room started to fade away. The phone began ringing. It was his father.